Good happy Friday evening, March 27, 2020. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Friday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Friday evening, so let's begin. First up, President Trump signs coronavirus Diddle must package in hopes to curbing COVID-19 economic impact. President Donald Trump on Friday signed the 2.2 trillion coronavirus settlement package just hours after it passed a voice vote in the House of Representatives. COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know. Let's take a look. Hundred in 58 number of people in New Hampshire who have tested positive for COVID-19. 553, 244 number of people worldwide who have tested positive. One number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 25 number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 1,301 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. There are zero cases in Co-op, 23 cases in Grafton, 7 cases in Carroll, 8 cases in Belknap, Seven cases in Merrimack, seven cases in Stratford, two cases in Sullivan, two cases in Cheshire, 35 cases in Hillsborough, and 67 cases in Rockingham. New cases each day in New Hampshire. As you can see in the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalizations, and in the red are the deaths. Only one death occurred so far in New Hampshire. Common symptoms, fever, cough, and difficult breathing. How it spreads. And prevention tips. And if you have not heard yet, beginning tonight at midnight here in New Hampshire, Governor Chris Sununu issues stay-at-home order for New Hampshire. Governor tells not all non-essential businesses to close. So beginning at midnight in New Hampshire, all non-essential businesses will be closed until May. Let's take a listen to that video from WR News 9. pandemic, Governor Chris Sununu is issuing a stay-at-home order effective Friday night at 11.59 p.m., lasting until May 4th. We cannot stress this enough. You should stay at your house unless absolutely necessary. Of course, we will not prevent you from leaving your home to go on a walk or when heading to the store or if you need groceries or simply going to work. But beyond essential necessities, you should not be leaving your home. The order will close what are deemed non-essential businesses like barber shops, hair and cosmetic salons, tattoo parlors, non-essential retail stores, and malls. Staying open will be grocery and convenience stores, pharmacies, gas stations, banks, and credit unions, and takeout and delivery from restaurants. The governor says he is not taking this action lightly because of the number of people who will be put out of work. Those are individuals that, for the first time in their lives, might not be able to put food on their table. And as a governor, I can't tell you how hard that decision is. 
but we have to also appreciate we need stamina. We're going to be in this for a while. There is an end game. There is no doubt an end game to this, but we do need to ask the people of the state to be patient. The governor is also closing state beaches to avoid crowds gathering as the weather warms up. And the stay home order will extend school closures until that May 4th deadline, meaning five more weeks of distance learning for students. And Sununu says that order could still be extended for weeks after that. The governor also says that a comprehensive list of the businesses deemed essential will be released tomorrow morning. Reporting live at the EOC Complex in Concord, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Businesses deemed non-essential get ready to shut doors. Governor orders closure in attempt to slow spread of virus. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9, Sean McDonald. I am Sherry Allen, proud owner of Mercedes-Benz in Portsmouth. We put every effort into making Mercedes- Everybody's saying get it, get it, get it, do it. There was a sense of urgency Friday at Debbie's Barbershop in Manchester after she was told she had only hours before she had to stop cutting hair. He said, I don't know if you heard, but it's midnight tonight, and I said, I'm going to call my customers today and just do who I can today, and that's going to be it. Non-essential shops like barbershops and salons have to close as part of the stay-at-home order, which had people walking in. I heard on the news that barbershops are closing, so I better get in here, get it done. Well, I can. While others, nervous about coronavirus, called to cancel. Uh, thank you for calling, and we'll get back in touch, okay? In these last hours of cutting hair, Debbie is cleaning the shop, well aware of COVID-19. It does a little bit make me nervous to have the shop open because uh, my mother-in-law was with me. She's 94 years old. Um, I don't want to get her sick. While Debbie is closing up, other businesses will continue under the stay-at-home order. You can still shop at grocery stores, pharmacies, gas stations and banks, as well as take out food. He's running a couple errands. Many, like Eric Gagnon, say they've already adjusted to only essential trips. See what they got to do. Get in control of the virus. So while many stores are being ordered to close, leaving Elm Street in Manchester quieter than usual, you can find people getting fresh air here with a new sense of normal. I think people just need to keep in mind what's going on. They need to be safe. Uh, you know, get out and get the fresh air, but be sensible about it, you know. Yeah, good advice. And a little perspective, that man right there was just laid off from his job at a restaurant because of the crisis and doesn't know he's gonna how, how he's going to pay his bills. But there are many essential businesses that will remain open, and they're hoping to get your business. You can find a list of all the essential industries that will remain open on our website, WMUR.com. For now, live in Manchester, I'm Sean McDonald, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Coronavirus in Massachusetts, February, Friday, March 27, update. And here is that update for Massachusetts. New cases, 823. Tested, 29,371. Total cases, 3,240. Hospitalization, 288, and death, 35. First coronavirus-related death in Maine announced as cases rise to 168. Let's take a listen to that video from WMPW News 8 Maine. I am Sherry Allen, 
proud owner of Mercedes-Benz in Portsmouth. We put every effort into making Mercedes. It was a somber opening today as it was released that Maine had its first death. It was a man in his 80s from Cumberland County. Now, Governor Janet Mills joined Dr. Nirav Shah today and both echoing the time is now to prepare. You've got to live your life as if you have it. Live your life as if it's here in your neighborhood, in your community. As the Maine CDC reported its first death, the number of cases increased by 13, bringing the new total to 168. Of those cases, 30 people are in the hospital. With the increased pressure on the hospital, Dr. Shaw is stressing the need for more protective equipment. Right now, with respect to PPE, we've got an umbrella and we're in a hurricane. So far, 24 people have recovered. Nationwide, worldwide, recovery has been occurring. Recovery is possible. Those who have recovered have tended to be younger, They've tended to have fewer pre-existing health conditions. As the number of recovery cases increases, the Maine CDC is still thinking about the virus coming back when social distancing measures are lifted. A spike is possible, but if that happens, our goal there is to ensure that our health care system is ready to provide care for each and every person who might get ill. The Maine CDC is anticipating the number of cases to continue to increase across the state but the governor says we will get through this. We will get through this because we are Maine. Governor and Dr. Shaw both repeated over and over again today at the press conference just the importance of staying home to limit the spread. In Augusta, Alison Ross, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And into our newsroom right now, we are following breaking news into our newsroom. We have some breaking news in Manchester, New Hampshire. Crews battle three alarm fire on Spruce Street in Manchester. Take a look at this photo right here of the scene. And this is the scene where the fire is, again, on Spruce Street in Manchester. Firefighters in Manchester were battling a three-alarm fire Friday on Spruce Street. The fire broke out at about 3.30 p.m. Manchester police sent out an alert that said there were multiple buildings and car fires in the 200 block area of Spruce Street. Streets were blocked off at Spruce and Maple Street, Beach and Spruce Street, Maple and Lake Street, and Beach and Lake Street. Heavy smoke could be seen coming from the scene. People were asked to avoid the area. And we will keep you updated as we get more information into our newsroom. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Friday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Friday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the red went down. Your Nasdaq closed in the red went down. S&P 500 closed in the red went down. Gold closed in the red went down. Oil closed in the red went down. U.S. 10-year closed flat. Your slash USD closed in the green and went up. And VX closed in the green and went up. Dow drops more than 200 points on Friday, but still finishes higher for the week. Stocks fell sharply on Friday, giving back some of the strong gains experienced in the previous three days to cap off another volatile week on Wall Street. Coronavirus live update. Italy death toll climbs over 9,000. 
Italy is by far the hardest hit nation when it comes to fatalities. A pandemic of the novel coronavirus has now killed over 26,800 people around the world. Globally, there are more than 586,000 diagnosed cases of COVID-19. The disease caused by the new respiratory virus, according to data compiled by the Center for System Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University. The United States has over 97,200 cases of COVID-19, the highest of any country. There have been at least 1,478 deaths in the U.S. More than 1,000 people have died in the past week alone. At least 816 people in the United States have recovered. Today's biggest development. Trump signs COVID-19 relief package. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson tests positive for COVID-19. Trump uses Defense Production Act for first time compelling GM to make ventilators. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday evening and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and bye everyone.